Hello and welcome to another episode of the Culture Hour. I am your hostess, Shelly Smith, where we talk everything workplace culture. Why? Because culture is not built in a day, culture is built every day. And so today I'm happy to report, I have another amazing guest, Jeffrey Knight. He goes by Jeff, at least I'm going to call him Jeff. Um, Jeff comes to us with a wealth of background, including, and of course, we always have to give thanks for 28 years in the Army, retired now, so thank you for your time and for your service. Um, that alone brings a wealth of information to workplace culture, but um, I actually had the pleasure of meeting Jeff originally through Mission 6-0. We both um, work with Mission 6-0 and do a multitude of things, and I've become very fascinated with Jeff and all of his posts on LinkedIn, but Jeff, your title currently is People Process Manager at Corp Mark, uh, is it Incorporated? International. International. I don't Cor know why I say Cor Mark International. Core Mark International. And the thing that I love about the title is that you run the full gamut between human resources and operations, which is an amazing space to be in. And I'm, you know, my background is all operations, so I can't wait to get into this conversation with you. So Jeff, over to you. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Get, get the viewers and the listeners excited about all the knowledge you're about to drop on us. <laughs> well, I, ho hopefully it's going to be beneficial to somebody, right? Yeah, uh, and I, I always say that if, as long as it as long as it uh, impacts some some just one person, uh, that that means a lot. But uh, Shelly, I appreciate you asking me to be on this. Um, obviously, you and I have worked before, as you had mentioned. But uh, you know, my my twenty eight years in the, in the army. Uh, it, it's funny because I joined the army originally, uh, right out of high school for um, to get money for college. And what that turned into is it turned into a career, um, which I didn't have any desire to do that. But once in it, it was I drank the Kool-Aid, so to speak. Love it. And so throughout that, I was a uh, I was an engineer officer. I was enlisted first and then an engineer officer. So I spent the first 10 years in engineer units, uh, mostly construction type. Um, so dirt dogs with graders and those types of things and carpenters and plumbers. The, the latter half was kind of uh, spreading my wings a little bit in terms of, uh, of those things. I spent um, six of the last 10 years in, as an inspector general, uh, which the primary functions on that are teaching and training, uh, mentoring, um, uh, inspections and investigations. And so it kind of got me into the kind of the HR space, even okay. though it was more military side. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also did a stand as a, as a uh, assistant professor of military science, uh, teaching ROTC cadets at the University of Utah. And okay. so uh, I kind of went through an entire gambit of, uh, of, of different skills and, of course, leadership throughout that and a, and a constant, constant learner of that. So that's kind of me in a nutshell. Civilian side, uh, I've been on the ops side, um, both in small manufacturing as well as a large trucking company as uh, the director of their schools, um, and then uh, moved into this role as a people and process development manager with Cormark. Um, and so you can kind of see where I'm, I'm really not a master of anything, uh, but it's kind of given me a breadth of knowledge of a lot of different things out there. I love it. I love it. I love the full gamut, and I'm quite sure that Cormark is very thrilled and honored to have you um, with all the knowledge you have. So tell me, with all of the experience and the exposure that you've had and that you're currently getting, what are the trends that you see happening? And, and trends, conversations over the last 12 to 18 months is maybe different from what you've seen before. You know, it has. I think obviously 2020 for all of us was a horrible year. And as a matter of fact, I don't know that we're even out of the pandemic. Uh, technically, yeah. I guess we're not uh, yeah. <laughs> into 2021. So uh, the, the world changed, it kind of went back to normal, and then kind of is coming back again to where it was uh, in 2020. You know, a lot of the things coming back into the workforce, and, and for me, uh, the thing about 2020 was, uh, is that for the entire year of 2020, I was laid off. And so uh, moving from one position, trying to, and then moving into unemployment, trying to find a position, um, and those types of things. And what's one of the things that, that, that came out of that is, is a deeper understanding of kind of what employers are looking for, um, which wasn't much in 2020. <laughs> uh, let, let's put it that way. Let's just um, be clear. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, <laughs> which wasn't much in 2020. Uh, but at the same time, it was more or less uh, a growth period for myself, personal growth. Um, you know, the, 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 one of the saving graces for me was my work with Mission Six Zero uh, in leadership development um, and, uh, and those types of things. But really what it came down to is trying to understand what companies were looking for uh, in my personal journey. Mm -hmm. And then being able to, I guess, sell that, uh, I hate that word, uh, but that's in essence what, you, what you're trying to do is, hey, yeah. come look at me. Yeah. Um, and so it was very interesting. W moving back into the workforce after that time, um, I continue to see that and I continue to see where the, uh, how do I want to put this, the, the reluctance to take a chance on people. Mm -hmm that maybe don't have the specific industry knowledge mm -hmm. that they're looking for. So they're all, they're all looking for the unicorn, yeah. which we all know does not exist. Doesn't exist. Yes. Um, I have. It, go ahead. No, 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 you go ahead. Yeah. And so, so it's, it was really interesting. So going from one side to the other side um, and, and in, in my role now, which kind of goes in between HR and ops supporting where I need to, uh, also a little bit into leadership development. Um, what you find with, you know, the, the, you have the office employees, you have warehouse employees, you have all different types. And really what it comes down to is, hey, what is the need? Where, what type of person are we looking for? And what, what takes precedence? And by that, I mean, what takes precedence in, do we need the volume? Do we need or do we need specific, you know, roles? Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of been, you know, this has kind of been a learning process for me as well mm -hmm. um, in, in this type of role, because it's not something that I've kind of floated in between. Mm -hmm. um, and so trying to support operations uh, and as well as HR and kind of bridge that gap. Yeah. There's so much in what you said that I, I want to dive into. Um, and what I heard was, and I certainly am hearing from, uh, from my clients as well, is we have to look at a resume different now because of the gaps that people may have in the resume that maybe never had them before. They either left out of pressure choice or, or the position was eliminated because of everything that happened with the pandemic. So there's a multitude of reasons why people have a gap now. But you said something interesting, and I would love to know how how are you how are you bubbling that up as you're helping to fill and or train now those gaps of people that they don't necessarily have the skill, but they absolutely have the behavior that you're looking for to fit the team. So how are you? I think selling is correct. How are you selling that? How have you mentored maybe other people that were in your boat? and say, hey, you know, when you come to an interview, do this, don't do this, you know, frame it this way. And then once you get on board, so there's all kinds of ways I'm going to let you decide how you want to further unpack that. But there's a lot in there of whether you're employed now, whether you're thinking about leaving now because the culture's not right, whether you did leave, whether you're looking or whether you're a recruiter. So you, you take the angle. Yeah. And, you know, and, and what's what with what you said, Shelly, in terms of um, you know, how has that changed or how do we need to look at it a little bit differently? We, we, and by we, I mean, just the general society and, and companies and those types of things. And in my opinion, it is that, Hey, we're going to read the resume for six seconds, uh, which I think is the industry standard, I guess. Yeah. That's what everybody tells us anyway. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to, we're going to either put it over here, or put it over here. Yes. Um, which, which I think is where we lose a lot of talent. I think companies lose a lot of talent in that, in, in terms of that. Now, I also understand the recruitment side, the recruiter side, and that there isn't enough hours in the day to be able to, to do that. But I personally believe that there's enough that you can dig into, dig, dig into a resume a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, for me personally, if, if I'm a hiring manager, I'm, I'm not so interested. I, I'm interested that, hey, have you been in the environment? Have you been in, in something similar? Um, and you know, in my previous job, it was more or less, Hey, I, have you, have you been around, uh, semi-trucks? Have you been around trucking a little bit, or at least have an idea of what it is? 
But me, when I go into those, I go into more of the character questions of are, you know, hey, so how do, how do you handle this? How would you handle this situation? Or you have this one. Because I think that is really where you find the true mark of somebody mm-hmm. is, is those types of answers, as well as whether or not how authentic they are. Mm-hmm. And, a lot, and most people can tell, I mean, you can tell when somebody is authentic and when somebody's not. Um, and, and so if there's any advice in somebody going into an interview, that's my advice for that is, hey, be authentic, mm-hmm. be truthful. Mm-hmm. Um, now, obviously, there are some nuances in there and good interviewing techniques and all those types of things. Absolutely pay attention to those. Uh, you have to you have to present um, uh, on those. But at the same time, it's it's an authenticity of who you are, where you've been and, and how you can help. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and go ahead. I, I was going to say um, I'm 100 percent in agreement with that, which is why I love, you know, like behavioral assessments to help you sort um, more about the person's hardwiring to help you further sort the resume pile to your point. But let me back up before you get to the interview. When you're looking at someone's resume, uh, some people look at, like you said, specific industry skill sets. Some people look at the length of the time. Some people look at the results or like that opening piece or maybe the cover letter. What is it that draws you in to even get the person who doesn't have the skill set? into the job as a potential person? What are you, what are you looking for there personally? So per, personally for me, I'm, I'm looking for that summary uh, at, at the very top or somewhere in there that, hey, this is, this is kind of who I am. Okay. Um, this, is, this is kind of the skill sets. And, and for me, I'm gonna key in on some of the things, some of the, the keywords. I mean, uh, the, all of them are you know, kind of standard, the leadership, uh, mm-hmm. you know, management, um, you know, whatever specific it might be. But at the same time, I, I'm going to pick up on something such as understanding or empathy or those words, those values. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. that's really what it comes back to is, is the values. And you know, this is, you know, better than I do is that values guide us. Yes. Uh, it, it personally and as well within a company or an organization or a team. Yeah, absolutely. And so, and so if you can get a feel for that, uh, you know, and that's hard in a resume because nobody's telling you to put values in a resume. You're you're right, but but I I do agree, and I go back I go back and forth because most people are so trained. Most recruiters are so trained not to look at the resume. To your point, so we have to begin to shift and to get attention. So you've given a couple of good nuggets. I want to repeat on both sides of that is if you're looking for a job. Go back to that more, uh, I won't say traditional because I don't know it was always there, but give a good opening why, state some of your values, state some of your, you know, hardcore wiring. And if you're a person who likes order, systematic process routine, by golly, I encourage you to, to write that down and call that out. I'm looking for an organization that is has systematic, uh, you know, processes. That tells me if we're a startup, if, if, if we're an entrepreneurial, innovative spirit that is change, 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 this might not be for you. But if we're an organization that's looking for the process driven, for the consistent, for the flow, for the systematic, for the, the, the every single day, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, you're going to grab my attention. So lean into that. And then I heard you say, when you get into the interview, be you. Call out what you're looking for. Be authentic. Be real. Be truthful. Talk about why you've done a change, why you left, why you have a gap. And then also, can I also add, lean into what was posted about the job and about the company. So you make sure that you go in and you can tie authentically your values to their values that you saw written or what was um, put out there. It just, it makes for a better conversation, I think, um, because today's world, the the potential employee and the employer are vetting each other. (laughs) <laughs> it's not yep. just a one-way street now, right? No, it is not. It, it is not in the least. Um, and, and that's what, you know, so, so a quick story in my journey on, on unemployment and searching for, and I think I was in the 400s of how many I applied for, uh, but that wasn't the only thing. That was, that was something that I did, um, you know, but, but a majority of it was networking. It was, you know, getting out on LinkedIn, 
uh, you know, putting yourself out there, uh, which I struggled with in the beginning. But there was there was about a halfway mark during my unemployment, which was almost one year exactly. It was 363 days. Not that I was counting. Uh, but uh, but but there was a, there was a point in there where I started. I, I was doing everything that everybody was saying. Uh, the pandemic had a huge impact on being able to find employment. Um, but there was a point in there that said, hey, you know what? You really need to be who you are. And you don't need to apologize for, um, you know, this, this whole, for me, it's, it's more or less, I'm not, I'm a generalist versus a, a um, specialist. specialist. Mm -hmm. And so with a generalist, it's very hard because everybody is looking for that specialist. Hey, what can this person do one single thing well? Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not that way. The army didn't raise that way. The mm -hmm. army said, hey, go do this. Um, I don't know how to do that. Uh, good, March, go. We, we don't care. Mm -hmm. um, and you had to go figure it out. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's, that was, it's, it's embedded in me that whatever it is, it's like, hey, I, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm going to go do it. Mm -hmm. and, and so that piece that you talk about in the interview, once you get to that point is that you need to point those things out and you need to specify specifically within there, how that experience translates into what they yes. want. Yes. Amen. Yes. And, and also, and also, since we're kind of talking about this, how it fits into their culture. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. You need to come, you need to come uh, ready to say if they talk about innovation, if they talk about collaboration, if they talk about uh, uh, systematic approaches, if they talk about adding value, you've got to be able to draw the line between what that means to you. Because what teamwork means to you may not be what it means to me. And so again, I think in that vetting process of the courtship of the interview, both parties need to come to the table ready to talk about that. So now let's let's switch gears with that. Two things. I want to go ahead and, and wrap up like this interviewing and, and looking piece. What are some of the, the values that you have inside of your company now and things that are really important that as you're working with and dabbling in HR and operations leadership development, what are some things that you guys are focused in on? Yeah, so, so the, 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 the biggest ones, and, and we have, um, you know, so basically what it comes down to is, is the five are integrity, pioneering, family, committed, and customer, uh, customer centric. Okay. And those are the five values. Okay. And, and so all of those types of things, and we, when we bring folks in, um, we're, we're not asking that people adopt those as their personal values. We're, we're asking them to, hey, your personal values are yours and everyone's is different. Um, you know, my, my top three are, um, are, are humility, honesty, and integrity. Just so happens that one of my personal values is the company's as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I can also fit those other two into the overall values of the company. And, yeah. and that's important because there's important distinction there. There's, there's the distinction that values go up on the wall because, hey, they look good and they're sexy and, you know, and, and they're, you know, I, I guess the words of today. And then there's, the, then there's the side that, hey, this is what we want to base our decisions off of. Because if you do that, then the rest of it's going to follow. Um, and so when, when, we're, when we're concentrating on those things, it's more of a building on those values that 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 you base your teamwork off of and that you have the trust respect um, appreciation and confidence um, to to move forward in that and if and if we can have the team members do that then again that the, the rest is going to follow absolutely can can you um i hate to put you on the spot and, and if you can't think of anything it's fine but is there anything that when you first started in this role that you did to sort of uncover where, where are those values aligned? Where are the opportunities? And if so, what did you do? Or that, what that, are you doing? Yeah, and that's a great question. That, that's an excellent question. So one of the things that, that I am doing, so taking a look at the values, taking a look at the culture, um, obviously drinking from a fire hose because this industry is not an industry that I'm used to or have been in before, but again, Generalist, army, flexibility, adaptability, those types of things are, 
are, you know, I consider them a strength of mine, uh, as I do for a lot of military personnel, because all the different situations we've had to be in or mm -hmm. take care of. Um, taking a look at the overall, understanding first what was going on, where, where the company was at right now. Um, and this is, this is the Salt Lake Division of Cormark. Um, so understanding where the division was, um, where it needed to go, and then, of course, to continue on with, hey, how do we get there? Um, and really what it came down to is, okay, we want to make sure that these values are what we base it off of. And so what we created was, uh, was an onboarding program that focused very heavily on the values, on team, on attitude, uh, on those types of things. Uh, we even, you know, I, and I, I do the onboarding here for the division um, every day. As a matter of fact, after, right after this, I, I go into uh, an orientation. Um, and, and part of that is we even, we even quote Victor Frankl um, and, and uh, you know, those types of things, which you go, wait a minute, you're quoting Victor Frankl in an orientation? Well, yes, we are. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it comes down to the attitude piece. And that's the one that we do is that, hey, the, the last mm -hmm. of human freedoms is to choose one's own attitude. I'm not sure that's not the exact quote, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it, it's close and it gets the point across. But that is, that is really a, a matter of assessing where, where you at when you come into a role mm -hmm. um, is what I did. Understanding that, you know, in that first 30, 60, 90 days, understanding where that is, understanding what are the needs, and then, okay, guys, let's go to work. Let's collaborate and let's move to uh, what process we need to, uh, you know, come up with. And of course, it's going to change. And it has. It's changed like 15 different times. Uh, over the last six months, uh, on but is how it getting? Things. But is it getting clearer? It, it is getting clear, um, and and the the biggest piece on that is it's getting clear from the very outset when they join the company. Love. What Setting, are, are there some things that you've done differently there that you could give us some nuggets? You know the 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 biggest thing is is I, me. I'm I'm a very uh, we we have kind of a script. We have we have PowerPoint. That, that we present off of. For me, when I'm presenting, I, I'm very off the cuff. If I'm, if I'm asked to do a script or to follow a certain script, I'm, I, I'm just not that good. Well, I might not be good, that good right now, but, uh, but I'm being me. Um, no, 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 I, I get it. I, I spend a lot of time making a PowerPoint and then I don't follow it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but it does help guide. And, yeah. and when, we move, when we move into it, it's more or less, uh, where it's it's hit in one section, then it's hit in a neck in another one on the values, and mm -hmm. then it's hit in a third one during the first couple of hours, and so it's very value intensive. Um, and then it. what we wrap around. Wait, with, let me stop you for a second. When when you say it's hit, can you can you tell the listeners and those that are watching the video replay? What is it you're doing? Are you storytelling? Are you giving examples? Are you giving pictures? For me, I'm going through, he's talking about a culture playbook of some sort, but I might be wrong. What do you mean hit? What are you no, doing? So, so when, when I say hit, we hit them visually okay. Okay, with, with the values themselves. Uh, from that, then we start to wrap in the, 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 uh, the concept of trust, of respect, um, and, and also in examples of, hey, this is what happens out on the floor. Okay, so, and, and these are the examples of those types of values. Beautiful, so that's, if, that's what I was looking for. You're, un, you're unpacking it, you're describing it. This is what we say, do, think, feel around these values. A hundred percent, hundred percent. Which is critical because so many people do orientation and they say, yeah, we talk about values and they literally just read, these are our values. That's not enough. You got to unpack it. You got to focus on it. You got to go, this is what it is and what it isn't. And I just wanted to, I, I, I knew you were doing that. And I just wanted to draw that out. No, I, I appreciate that. No, I, and, and I love it because that's, because unless you, unless you set the expectations up front uh, with any employee, any level, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, it is to what the organization is about, how they want to do things. Then it, it's too hard to go back. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like coming in as a commander in the army. I, I was always taught as a commander or as a leader in the army, hey, come in hard, 
if you come in hard initially, I mean, not being, you know, a jerk or anything, but coming in hard that, hey, this is how we're going to do it. This is what the expectations are. Yeah. It's easier to back off of that than it is to try to, to, to undo, to redo. Yeah. Which is why, which is why uh, it's so many, uh, so many people say, I don't want to hire somebody who's, or, who's already been doing it for years and years because it takes too long to undo what they learned. I want, <laughs> for, I mean, that's why, that's why people say that. That's why. Yep. Yeah. Um, All the bad habits. E exactly. So it's best. So I wanted to clarify that. And I also want it, for those of you who don't know, the Victor Frankel, I'm assuming you're referencing um, probably his most, I know he's written a few different ones, but Men's Search for Life, Man's Search for Life is Man's what you're Search referencing. For, yep. Yeah, that's one of my favorite books as well. Yeah, absolutely. So if y'all haven't read that, you need to, it's a quick, easy read, very thin book, highly philosophical, but really good. And I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it's really good. You need to, yeah, Man's ser man Search for Meaning. There we go. Man's yep. Search for Meaning. That's why I'm looking at my bookshelf because I, I, I was like, <laughs> I know it's up there. Man's Search for Meaning. <laughs> that anyway anyways uh to detract all right so now let, let's switch and let's talk about um anything that you're you're focusing in on from additional leadership development as it relates to culture anything different from what you've been said or something that you're doing or, or about to start doing no except in terms of uh except in terms of so so one, one of the things on there that, that we've all gone through as, as managers is, is the same thing that our, uh, our new employees have gotten, the same, the same type of briefing, the same kind of interaction, or, hey, this is where we want to go. Um, in, in addition to that, then we start getting into the, the specific topics of, uh, of coaching, of communication, of you know, motivation, um, and those types of topics, which, uh, again, the, the hard part uh, with leadership, with management, whatever you want to break it down. Uh, I break it down into leadership because that's really, truly what it is. Um, you know, to, to get a team to move, uh, to be a part of that team, uh, to lead it. Um, it. All of those types of things are, they're called the soft skills, but they're not, there's nothing soft about them. They are hard and they are difficult and they take such amount of energy Mm -hmm. um, the, the easy part is teaching somebody the technical piece. Mm -hmm. Now that gets a little bit harder when you get into the STEM and you get into engineering and all that stuff. Um, it, you know, and that's probably in that group where you want to start looking for a little bit more specific person in that regard. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, but in, in some of the, in, in a lot of roles out there, it's, it's not necessary to have that background. So getting in and teaching some of that, Hey, how do you, how do you handle, um, you know, an individual that's that that you're having a conflict with, or um, that isn't listening to what you're saying. How, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. You know, well, there's the old, you know, there's the the old hard ass style of, well, you just hammer them and mm -hmm. write them up, and you know, hey, you're out the door, you do it again. Mm -hmm. um, but as you know, really anybody that knows, that's not an effective strategy. No, <laughs> no, it may have used to be years ago, but not anymore. Yep. Yeah. And, and that was the, that was the old style of, uh, you know, of, uh, of management. And, and that's what it was. Hey, put this widget right here. Mm -hmm. and, and that's all you're going to be doing. But mm -hmm. now, uh, you know, in civilian life, and we even see it in the military mm -hmm. uh, with, with deployments and we have uh, young NCOs and, and oftentimes some, some that are very young that are asking to be doing things that, are well above their pay grade and or experience. Mm -hmm. um, so translate that into, and I think all companies do that as well. It's like, hey, can you take care of this, especially in the startup world? Yeah. Um, and so it, it's it's kind of an interesting uh, d dynamic that you know, hey, we we need to be able to adjust to, hey, what what are we looking for, you know, in the culture, setting that expectation, and then helping the people grow within that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, the more companies uh, lean into that. If you spend more time on the soft skill, that the 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 rest of it just comes so easy. But it's counterintuitive for so many individuals, if not the masses, 
Um, I think it's going to take uh, our generation to be gone and, and, and our kids' kids' generation to almost be gone for that true transition of it's the interpersonal scale, it's the influence, it's the relationship building. That's what gets the work done. Not the, you know, the technical skill becomes the bonus, not the other way around. And so I definitely think that we're, we're seeing this, this trend sort of shift, which I love. So we're going to put a wrap on today's culture hour. But before we do so, where's the couple of things? Where can people find you? Number one. And number two, what are your final thoughts, ideas, suggestions, posts, books? What, what do you have for a wrap for us? Yeah, so so I would be remiss uh, if if I did, you know, and, and I'm going to go directly to, uh, well, actually, let me back up for a minute. So primarily, my, my biggest social media is on LinkedIn. That's where I spend a majority of my time. Um, and, and so I'm on there. Just look me up, Jeffrey Knight, um, and, and it'll look up. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, if you're interested in CoreMark uh, International and what we do, uh, just Google Core-Mark. Um, and it'll bring us up and it'll kind of show you where, where, what we do and, and where we're at. Um, and, uh, and, and the book recommendation, I would be remiss if I did not um, mention Deliberate Discomfort by Jason Dent Van Camp of Mission Six Zero. Um, and, and, I, I've, and the reason I say that is, is because that book came into my life at a time that I was unemployed um, and, and it had a very real impact on me. It kind of wrapped up and summed up everything about leadership that I've ever held my entire career into one location. Mm -hmm. And so I, I absolutely recommend that book. Um, I'm also reading another one right now, which is, which is a great book. And that's, uh, I believe her name is Kim Scott, Radical Candor. Hmm. Um, and, and another excellent book in, in, terms of, uh, in terms of culture, how to be a great boss, um, those types of things. And so uh, highly recommend that. Um, and then lastly, really, what, what I really want to implore on people is that, uh, you know, and this goes for veterans and anybody else too, uh, now that you've kind of given me the stage a little bit, Shelly, um, it. It is, hey, we are all, uh, we are all going through something right now. Um, as you listen to this podcast, as, as Shelly and I talk, we're going through something right now that we don't know what the others, that, that they're going through. Be mindful of that. Um, but if you're going through something difficult, reach out and ask for help. We Absolutely. lose too many people, too many people this day and age. And especially during this pandemic, especially what's going on in the world events right now. Uh, and, and, and hey, be vulnerable. Reach out and talk to somebody. I can't stress that enough. Um, and then the last thing that I want to say um, and I apologize, Shelly, but it, it's also important for me. I, I would be okay. remiss too, but I hold a, a weekly uh, group um, for veterans and their allies um, a, on Zoom every week, every Friday at 12 noon Eastern. And it's a space that we provide. I started it with Dave DeQuelgio, a Navy fighter pilot, um, and he's within the Warrior Rising family too. Okay. Uh, and, and we, we provide this, it's called angels 14 and we provide it for, uh, for people just to come for camaraderie, community and connection. And so okay. if anybody's interested in that, um, on LinkedIn, you can, you can DM me, uh, I'll send you the link. Um, and, uh, but it's just been impactful and it's something that, that came out of the pandemic too, that, that was created by he and I, um, and we're just kind of, we're kind of continuing to go with it. I love it. I love I love all of those things and, and echo the reach out and and ask somebody for help, even if it's just to start a conversation. There's too we've lost too many for a variety of reasons and didn't see the the cries for help or didn't know or they didn't know where to go. So you gotta lean into the tribes that are around you, use your resources, and you never know when you have a tribe. And you didn't even know you had them. Um, it's just amazing what you can do when you turn up your listening ears and like lean in with an ounce of vulnerability. And it's crazy. It's great. It's crazy. Amazing. What's what's around and how people can listen and help. And, and also listening to somebody else's story that you realize it isn't less than yours, but you're like, okay, I'm not the only one. And that's 
not that it's a good thing that there's other people that are in pain, but in the same token, there is something about, I'm not a psychiatrist, even though I stayed at a Holiday Inn last night. No, um, I use that joke way too much, but it's just so good. Um, but but there is something in that when you find somebody else, then all of a sudden you you feel more comfortable talking about it. And you don't know that if you don't, you know, absolutely check off these different groups to find out your groove and your tribe that that resonates with you. So I totally appreciate that you dropped all of those resources. And I will have Jeff's uh, LinkedIn information in the the different places that you're listening to this. So in the description, you'll be able to click on and connect further with Jeff and any of the resources that he talked about today. So Jeff, we thank you so much for being here today. Keep, uh, keep being you and uh, rocking out life. And for those of you who are looking more on workplace culture, you can go to my website and uh, get all kinds of free downloads and resources. But until then, be you, stay well, stay connected, and be the courageous leader that somebody else needs today.